In this lecture, we are going to discuss the two most important aspects of the human papilloma virus. First is the properties and second is the replications. So, in this lecture, we will discuss in detail the properties and the replications of the HPV. So, human papilloma virus actually causes the two most important disease. First, it actually causes the papilloma. Papilloma is actually a benign tumor of the squamous cells, which is also known as the warts. And second, it is actually the cause of the cancer of three most important parts of our body, cervix, anus, and the penis. Okay. First of all, we will discuss the property. So, let's get started. If we look at the properties of the human papilloma virus, so as we know that the every virus has two most important components. First is the capsid that is actually made up of protein and second component is actually the genome. Similarly, HPV also has these two components as well. So if we look at this virus, so here is the outer capsid. And now, the HPV capsid is at actually icosahedral in shape, means 20 sided. Okay. Similarly, inside the capsid, you will see the presence of the genome. So, I write it outside the virus, and here is actually the genome. Now, HPV genome is actually the double stranded circular DNA molecule present inside the capsid okay and there is no envelope present outside the hpv so that's why we can also say that hpv is actually a non envelope virus okay so if we look deep into the genome of the hpv then we will see the different genes so genes are basically the parts of the uh, DNA that is actually involved in the formations of the proteins. So, if we cut this DNA and uh, put it in the straight way, then we will see the two most important genes, early genes and the late genes. So, in the early genes, you will see the presence of the E1, E2, so on, E7. So, in the early portion, you will see the seven early genes. Okay. Similarly, at the second phase, you will see the presence of the late genes L1 and the L2. Only two late genes actually present in the HPV. Okay. So, these are actually the genes, part of the DNA. They actually, first of all, make the messenger RNA, then it will make the proteins. Okay, that's the normal process. DNA forms the messenger RNA and messenger RNA forms the protein. So, similarly, E1 gene produces the E1 protein. Okay, E2 genes produce the E2 proteins. Similarly, E3 gene produces the E3 proteins, and this process will go uh, going on and produce. E7 genes produce the E7 protein. Okay. Similarly, L1 genes produce the L1 proteins and the L2 proteins. Okay. So, genes produce the uh, different proteins. But keep remember uh, what's actually the difference between the early proteins and the late proteins. Early proteins actually involve in the replication of the genome of the HPV. Okay. They are actually involved in the replications of the DNA, these proteins and the late proteins are actually, uh, these are basically the capsid. Okay. These are the most important thing. L1 is actually the capsid and L2 is actually help in the entering of the genome into the uh, capsid. Okay. Now, if we look at the different types of the HPV, so you will see the uh, more than 100 different types of the HPV. So, each type is, is, is specific to the specific part of the, our body. So, if I say uh, HPV 1, 2, 3, 4 actually cause the skin warts. 
these are actually involved in the skin warts human papilloma virus 6 and the 11 actually involve in the genital genital warts okay and the HPV human papilloma virus 16 and the 18 most important they actually cause the cancer of the cervix penis and the anus so if we look at the replication of the HPV so we will categorize the replication of the HPV into two normal and the malignancy in which you will see the HPV replicate normally and release from our uh, body and in the malignancy you will see the HPV cause or convert the normal squamous cells into the malignant cell and there is no uh, transmission or there is no release of the virus from that side. So basically as we know that the skin has three most important layers, outer most is the epidermis, next is the dermis and last is the hypodermis. So if you look at this one, here is the dermis layer and here is the epidermis so epidermis is actually consist of squamous epithelial cells okay so how the wider hpv will enter into the squamous cells first of all uh, when you see the abrasions on the skin okay here is the abrasion and at that side the virus hpv virus will enter and reach at the basal layers of the squamous cell. So, first layer that is actually attached at the basement membrane that is actually the basal layer. Basal layer of the squamous cells. Okay. Now, when this HPV enter into the cell, basal cell, okay. Now, first of all, it will enter into the basal cell and then it will reach into the nucleus of the uh, basal cell okay when that virus hpv enter into the nucleus only the genome will enter into the nucleus of the uh, squamous cells okay and at that time you will see the formations of the early proteins okay first step you will see the formations of the early uh, proteins okay that's the most important thing. And as we know that the our skin cells continuously slug off from the surface and new cells actually uh, forms at the basal side. Okay. It means that these cells actually grow in the upward direction. Okay. So similarly, when the cell, squamous cell get divided, along with that, the viral genome will also be divided. Okay. So similarly, Next phase, you will see the replications of the viral genome. Replication of genome. Okay. And in that side, you will see here is the now the viral genome will replicate in the nucleus. Okay. That's the most important thing. Here is the replications of the viral genome similarly when this squamous cell divide along with the division of the squamous cell the viral genome will also transmit to the other cells if i say here is the one cell and that cell contains the viral gene okay when this cell divide then the viral gene will also transfer to the daughter cells as well so similarly the viral genome will also enter into the daughter cells of the squamous cells okay that's the most important thing for early proteins next is the replication of the genome okay important thing the dna of the uh, hpv will always be present in the nucleus in the form of the episomes okay that is actually called the episomes presence of the just presence of the HPV genome into the nucleus of the squamous cell that is actually called the episome. Next, you will see the applications of the late proteins. So, late proteins actually produce the capsid. Okay, that's the most important thing. And in that side, you will see again 
these cells moving at the superficial surface and in that case you will see the late proteins will produce the capsid okay now you will see the two component has been produced first is the genomic material and next is the capsid and in the late phase you will see the release of the virus okay into the environment so it means that when the virus released from the superficial surface these viruses can infect the other people as well okay that's the normal replication okay in the malignancy you will see again the virus will enter through the abrasion and reach the basal surface of the squamous cell okay that's the most important thing here is the virus and that viral will viral genome will reach into the uh, nucleus okay after that you will see if i say here is the nucleus and here is the genome dna of the host cell dna of the squamous cell and in that case you will see the viral viral dna will get integrated with the squamous cells or the host cells now you see in that case you will see the viral dna is separated from the host dna okay but in that case host dna will get integrated with the viral dna so that is actually the integration now here is the early process early protein synthesis here is the integration now in that case you will see when the viral dna get integrated with the host dna then in that case e6 and the e7 genes e6 and the e7 genes will over expressed and produce the e6 and the e7 proteins now e6 and the e7 proteins interferes with the tumor suppressor genes they, that is the p53 and the retinoblastoma proteins okay these are basically the tumor suppressor protein these proteins actually produced by the virus and these are actually produced by the host cells so uh, why these proteins actually produce because these proteins actually control the replication of the normal human cells okay when these e6 and the e7 interferes with the p53 and the retinoblastoma or destroy these proteins then what will happen then tumor this cell will start converting into the tumor cells and it will start growing rapidly or division will occur rapidly due to the suppression or destructions of the tumor suppressor proteins okay that's the most important thing but in that case you will never see the over expression of the e6 and the e7 genes of the uh, virus okay and in third case you will never see the formations of the late proteins okay that process will be missing in that case okay and there is no release of the release of the virus but you will see just the conversion of the squamous cells into the malignant cell because the viral protein e6 and the e7 destroy the tumor suppressor genes of the squamous cell that is the p53 and the retinoblastoma as you can see so in that case you will see these cells will convert into the malignant cell okay so here is the normal process and here is the how the hpv cause the or convert the normal cell into the malignant cell so this is all about the human papilloma virus if you still have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much